So one of the most frequent questions I see on my videos are people asking which Apple Silicon MacBook to buy in 2025. Luckily for you, myself and my chief Apple technician have bought every single Apple Silicon MacBook since 2020. And there's one in particular that we think is the best choice. So in this video, I wanna go through my thought process and make the decision a little bit easier for you. So first of all, you need to figure out what you're actually using your MacBook to do on a daily basis. Because I see people make mistakes here, either buying an you know, underpowered system and then having to upgrade it like 12 months later, or vice versa, wasting hundreds of bucks on a Pro or Mac series chip when they just don't need that extra performance. Now I have a really simple way to figure this out. Just grab a piece of paper uh, and just write down all the stuff you use your MacBook for. Here's a list of some popular workflows broken up into how demanding they are on your system, either low, moderate, or intensive. Then just draw a pie chart, roughly estimate what percentage you'll spend on each workflow, and color in anything classed as moderate or intensive. For me, I do a lot of research and productivity tasks like uh, web browsing, Google Docs, and emails, but I also do more intensive tasks like video editing, uh, travel photography, and design work using Photoshop and Lightroom. So just look at your pie chart if the majority of it is fairly simple stuff like productivity, Word documents, or you know web browsing, and maybe a little bit of more demanding stuff every now and then, you should probably first of all consider a MacBook Air. Now there are two main choices here, 13 versus 15 inch. And of course the version, either the M1, M2, M3, or M4. Size choice is pretty easy. The two biggest differences for the 15 inch is obviously it's more expensive and you get a bigger screen. Now I definitely notice the bigger screen area for productivity stuff like Excel. And you can check out this little Excel comparison test I did to show you the difference. And then there's also stuff like side-by-side -side windows when multitasking. The 13 inch screen can feel a little bit cramped sometimes depending on what you're doing. Uh, I also have found that some commonly used corporate apps or websites like Salesforce, for example, just seem nicer to use on a slightly larger screen because of the way their UI scales. Plus, I found portability on the larger 15 inch Air doesn't really take too much of a hit compared to the 13 inch version, despite the larger size. They're both just so thin and lightweight. Now, as to which version you should buy, I'll make this decision really easy for you. Just get the M4 and here's my reasoning behind this. So number one, the M4 MacBook Air base models now come with 16 gigabytes of RAM as standard. Now on previous Airs, this was an additional 200 US dollar upgrade from the base models, eight gigabytes. Next, Apple dropped the price of the M4 Air base model to just $999. Now, if you remember, it was actually originally this price in 2020 with the M1 Air. And then it was $1,199 for the M2 Air and $1,099 for the M3 Air. Now, these two things are important because it means, A, there aren't that many used 16 gigabyte RAM MacBook Airs floating around out there. And B, if they are, the owner paid a massive premium for it. Something like, you know, three or 400 US dollars more than what you get with a brand new M4 Air base model if you were to buy it brand new today. And so likely they won't want to compromise on the price too much. So it's just not as good of a deal versus brand new, at least from what I've seen on used markets currently. Also for the first time ever, we finally get proper dual monitor support on the M4 Air. So you can have two external monitors running without needing to close the MacBook screen. This is maybe not relevant for everyone, but I know for a lot of you, this was a deal breaker for previous MacBook Airs. Now the M4 chip in general is also noticeably more powerful than older MacBooks in certain areas and workflows. But for everyday productivity stuff like multitasking and web browsing and you know, battery life, etc. There's no major difference between them. But I did go into way more detail in this video where I compared all four generations if you want a full comparison. Now, don't forget, you've also got all the other miscellaneous good stuff that comes with a brand new MacBook. So uh, your full warranty, your guaranteed software support for at least seven years, etc. Uh, the only reason you should consider a used or refurbished M2 or maybe M3 MacBook Air is if you can get a significant discount compared to a brand new M4, like 40 to 50% cheaper at least. And only if it also has 16 gigabytes of RAM. Otherwise, 
I really do think it's worth buying brand new this time when in the past I'd recommend considering an older generation first. Now, while I'm on the topic of buying new MacBooks, I am aware that some people like to upgrade more frequently, uh, like every two or three years, for example. Either they just like having the latest and the greatest, or they need to upgrade because of work demands, for example, designers or editors. Now, the usual process is create a listing on a secondhand marketplace like Craigslist or eBay, and then try not to get scammed. But there is another option. Upgraded's MacBook upgrade program allows you to purchase a brand new MacBook on an affordable monthly payment plan and then upgrade it every two years or own it outright after three years. And big thanks to Upgraded for supporting my channel and sponsoring this section of the video. Now the whole process is super easy. First, just pick your perfect MacBook, either an entry-level Air, a fully loaded Pro, or even your own custom configuration. And Apple Care Plus is always included. Then subscribe to low monthly payments spread over 36 months with the option to upgrade your device after 24 payments. If you choose to upgrade, Upgraded will take your MacBook back, refurbish it, and give it a new life, reducing waste and keeping old laptops out of landfill. Prices start at just $33.28 per month for MacBook Airs, and if you qualify for zero interest, there's literally no extra cost versus buying brand new from Apple directly. Actually, it's $40 cheaper if you use code Liam to get $40 cash off your order. So check out Upgraded's MacBook upgrade program using the link down below. So now that I've covered the MacBook Air, do I recommend paying a bit extra and going for the MacBook Pro instead, even if you maybe don't necessarily need a more powerful laptop? First of all, there are technically two MacBook Pros. Now the entry-level MacBook Pro with the non-Pro chip starting at $15.99 US dollars, and then the MacBook Pro with a more powerful chip, either the Pro or Max starting at $19.99 US dollars. I know, it's confusing. Think of the entry-level $15.99 version as getting mostly the same chassis and hardware as the more expensive MacBook Pro, but then getting the less powerful chip of the MacBook Air instead of the Pro version. And this kind of puts it in a weird position because you have the M4 MacBook Air that has the same M4 chip at an insanely good value of $999 versus $1599. And that M4 chip is simply not powerful enough for many people, even in the MacBook Pro with a larger chassis and a fan versus passive cooling and no fan on the air. Now don't get me wrong, it is a good laptop, but I just think the options on either side are so good that it makes it a really niche choice. So I recommend either sticking with an M4 Air or going all the way up to the M4 Pro MacBook Pro, which starts at $19.99. And that's the version I want to concentrate on. It is better than the Air in almost every single way. Better screen with 120 Hertz ProMotion, you know, the high refresh stuff you get on the iPhone Pro. Yep, that's the one. More ports, significantly more performance. And the Pro's base model comes with a 512 gigabyte SSD versus 256 gigabytes on the MacBook Air. Now, portability is also a factor, but I found it's not as significant as some people make it out to be. For example, the 13-inch Air versus the 14-inch Pro. I've traveled with both all around the world, and sure, the Pro is heavier and thicker, but the actual footprint in a backpack or on an airplane tray table, for example, is very similar. And in a backpack, you probably won't notice the 0.8 pounds or 360 gram weight difference, especially if you've got other stuff in there. So I wouldn't really let the lightweight air design of the air compared to the Pro influence your decision too much because in actual like day-to-day -day usage, it's just not that significant. And the trade-off is you get all these incredible features on the Pro that the Air just doesn't have. One side note here is that there definitely is a major difference between the 14 and 16 inch Pros. You can still travel with the 16 inch, but it is noticeably heavier and just not quite as portable. I often have trouble squeezing it into the laptop sleeve of certain bags, for example, and it's just not something that you want to use in tight spaces if you can avoid it. Uh, it's really best suited for those who prefer a larger screen, but mostly use the laptop at a desk and maybe travel between 
home and work. Carting this thing around airports or college lecture theaters, for example, is not ideal, at least in my own personal experience. There's also no difference in features between the 14 and 16 inch pros. You're just paying more and getting a larger screen size. Now, when it comes to choosing which pro chip, either the M1, M2, M3, or M4 Pro, uh, it's a little different to the MacBook Air, where I said, just get the latest version, the M4. Unlike the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro is for people who do more intensive stuff on their laptop, right? Like uh, video editing, compiling code, or 3D design, etc. So the question of which one should I get is a little bit more nuanced. The M4 Pro MacBook compared to the previous MacBook Pros only has very minor upgrades, like an updated webcam and Thunderbolt 5 ports versus Thunderbolt 4 on the previous versions. It's also got a slightly brighter screen and that new nano texture coding option. Now, I personally love nano texture. It significantly cuts down on reflections and glare, and you can learn all about it in this video linked down below where I go into way more detail. But in terms of the difference between all the pro chips, so the M1, M2, M3, and M4 Pro, let's just break it down a little bit. Now, here's a comparison chart showing you the configuration of the base models, and the number in brackets is the maximum possible configuration you can select. The M4 Pro has some noticeable improvements, particularly uh, more CPU performance cores and six gigabytes of additional unified memory over the previous M3 Pro. Side note, if you find these breakdowns helpful, I would really appreciate it if you helped me out and supported the channel and hit that subscribe button. Now the M4 Pro also has the same media engines for video rendering and playback as the M3 Pro. It also gets all the same GPU specific upgrades like hardware accelerated ray tracing, mesh shading and dynamic caching where the M2 and M1 Pro do not. And the M4 Pro gets significant improvements to memory bandwidth speeds too. But in terms of what effect these differences have on real life performance, it really depends on the workflow. Like if you're doing anything 3D related, for example, then yes, there is a pretty big difference. Same with video editing, uh, you would definitely want the M4 Pro in this situation. But on the flip side, when I was compiling code, there's no major difference between the M2, M3, or M4 Pro, just a minute or two. Same with some of the Adobe apps. There's a decent difference in Photoshop, for example, but maybe not quite as noticeable in After Effects. And this is why I don't necessarily recommend getting the latest and greatest MacBook Pro. Yes, the M4 Pro is technically the best version to buy, but if you can get most of the performance in your specific workflow out of an older version, but for half the price, that's pretty good. If you want a full comparison and breakdown of all the MacBook Pros, make sure you check out this super detailed video I made a few months ago. Now, if you think you need a more powerful Max chip instead of the Pro, chances are you might. There are significant performance improvements when going from a Pro to a Max. And at this point in the video, I recommend finding creators who specialize in your specific workflow. For example, photographers, uh, check out Art is Right's channel or developers, Alex Ziskind. Because my video is a little too general to go into the amount of nuanced detail you need to make an informed decision. But for me overall, the best MacBook in my opinion is a base model 14 inch MacBook Pro. Either an M2 Pro, uh, M3 Pro or M4 Pro version, doesn't really matter which one. Uh, I'll include a link down below to any sales I could find on the M4 Pro. Usually there's one for a couple hundred bucks off on resellers like Amazon. It is such an incredible laptop and easily handles pretty much everything that I can throw at it. Uh, but of course, if it's out of your budget or is totally overkill for your needs, the M4 MacBook Air is probably even better value coming in at about 50% cheaper and only really compromising in areas that don't really affect the average MacBook Air user anyway. So you just can't really go wrong this year, I guess. Also, the YouTube algorithm thinks that you are going to enjoy this video next. So if you're interested, give it a click and a watch and I'll catch you next time.